This is Let's Talk Colin Radio, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day, of the year, and of the century. <laughs> This on-the-air community forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join today's conversation by calling 415-663-8492 or 8317. And uh, when you call in, please do call in. Uh, when you call in, you'll hear a little noise as uh, Shelley puts you into the system. Just hold on until you hear her say you're on the air, and then give us a name, turn off your radio, and please keep the language clean. Thank you. It's live on air. So, uh, your hosts, we co-hosts and a guest. All right. Uh, Shelley, as I said, on the board. I'm Hello. Paul Raphael, Stephen Hurwitz. Good morning. And yeah. also, there's Paul Elmore. Thank you. A historic figure from Marshall. And uh, how fitting that today's topic should be Are you suggesting history. that I'm, uh, as, as they say, history? Well, history. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little oh, yellow wrong side. Yeah, yeah, aim towards that. There you go. Is that history or toast? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, this was uh, the topic, history. Uh, who needs it, basically? Why do we need it? Why do we need to learn about history? Who cares? I think you're and, a troublemaker. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, What's that call-in mis- number? <laughs> 415-663-8492. Yeah, history is bunk. Get rid of it. Don't even worry about I, it. I All think, I, I think uh, <laughs> listening to the radio or, uh, this morning, uh, our uh, designate Supreme Court uh, uh-huh. nominee would agree. History is told. <laughs> History is bunk. Oh, good um, point. So uh, it was precipitated by uh, a suggestion from... Paul Elmer, who uh, who is active with the uh, with the Tamales Regional, Regional History, Center. History Center up there in beautiful downtown Tamales, and uh, they're having a uh, a fundraiser for the town hall, the historic town hall. It's all history. Tamales is a historic place. That's true. And uh, so they're having a fundraiser on October sixth. In the afternoon, 2 to 5, Saturday, October 6th. And uh, the tickets, oh yeah, the tickets are $45. I wasn't going to mention that. uh, Uh, that, (laughs) uh, I'm probably uh, not allowed, I'm not supposed to mention that actually, I think. But uh, you can obtain tickets uh, from, uh, by calling. Can they get them online, do you know? Is that possible? Uh, Unfortunately, they're working on... um, Getting a, uh, a, a website, uh, interset, a website yeah. going, but well, uh, there are there are flyers around town, and you can always call the town With hall or call four one five six zero nine six eight five two is one of the numbers. So, uh, but with all that, and then there was a wonderful. Uh, Interview with on a another station. Sorry, I was listening to another station. <laughs> Michael Krasny talking to a Harvard history professor who's just written a huge tome about the history of the United States, uh, but from a different point of view, a more uh, more shaped by modern. Mm, what? How would you say it? More, more inclusive. Perhaps? More inclusive. Uh, so about women, about uh, about just ordinary folks, not it's just about the great of, leaders. Sort of like what Howard Zinn did. Sort of like that. Yeah. Yeah. We know. Although I think mm. she is less politically inclined than that. But uh, you know, he he had an agenda, which we'll talk about later. And there's a recent book out on the history of the poor. Oh. For the last 400 years. Oh, uh, really? Oh, that's continent. good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we're writing a good chapter <laughs> now, aren't we? New doesn't, histories. Doesn't it seem, though, I mean, you're pointing out something uh, uh, essential. Today we're writing uh, a history from this new specific point of view. Uh, right. In former times, they were writing a history from their point of view. Right. And maybe, uh, you know, 50, 100 years from now, there'll be a completely different point of view and exactly. history will be rewritten one more time. So there's one of the questions maybe for the show. Maybe from an is, ecological point of view. What is history? 
Well, it's his it, story. <laughs> you know that. That's certainly not her story uh, or their right. story. When I went on the board for the uh, Tamales Regional History Center, it's uh, primarily uh, uh, women. Yeah. And so uh, when I first started thinking about it, I saw what they were doing as her story. Mm, okay. <laughs> but it's not her story. It's no. family history. Right. These women are spokesmen for the families in Tamales, many of whom have been there for four and five generations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. They're not. Johnny come or Jilly came come <laughs> lately, <laughs> uh, and and that's to me. I was very flattered that I was asked to be on the board hmm. uh, by people that have been in the community uh, and their families that long. Hmm. It was very flattering to me. Well, I don't. So, know. are you all collecting fitting. a verbal history? Is that what's going we, on? We do oral history. Oral history. We get yeah. documents, letters, uh, mm-hmm. uh, artifacts. And photographs. There mm-hmm. was one woman um, who took photographs of virtually every child and every person in town in Tamales. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that is is part of the displays that we have in the history mm-hmm. uh, center, which is the old gym of the high school. Mm-hmm. So nice hardwood floors. Yeah, it's um, a great building. Lots of parking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and they're open uh, just the on week. It's mm. it's all volunteer, including mm. the curator. Mm. Although they've done a very professional job, mm. um, but so it's only open Saturdays and Sundays from um, one to four. Uh-huh. Are so, you guys looking for volunteers? Very much so for docents. Mm-hmm. It takes a little training, and but then. Uh, uh, one weekend uh, or, you know, one uh, three-hour session hmm. uh, once a month. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, we're, as a group, we're aging out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's time to get some new new blood in there. Get Absolutely. Some new people excited. Yes. Historic <laughs> figure. As a historic figure, I mean, you in uh, Marshall, people who still and call, I, you, still I, call I might you the add, mayor. I might add that we've got two other history centers here. Yes. Galenus, which I'm not familiar with, right. and the one in Inverness, which uh, Mason, I think they're yeah. doing a marvelous job Fantastic. There. Yeah, Dewey and all those guys, right. everybody involved with that. Wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> for yourself, have you uh, written your history down? Uh, the last couple pe- – I'm also a member of a writer's group in Tomorrow's. And I noticed that the last couple of pieces I've done were fairly short, uh, are of the memoir variety, hearkening back to uh, the time of Kennedy's assassination. Huh. And, you know, when I was going to school at San Francisco State. Right, right. Huh. But uh, so will your will you commit your history to the town hall to the the archives uh i may but I uh, uh, actually the uh, um the twig the series of twigs when they come out hmm. which is two three times a year the right ought to be group. more often yeah, but right. um those are are going in our archives oh excellent there you go so there's a there's a good reason for history, a little background in our uh, in our own community. I'm all for that. But what about history in general? Who cares? But who I, Maimonides I, I, was, or who I guess, cares? <laughs> Xerxes invaded. Well, who, Acapulco. who who cares that history uh, that's presented to the children in schools is ah. so extremely slanted from uh-huh. a particular perspective, which may or may not be actually accurate. Ah. But the history that's that's close to the ground, as as these local history centers, is much more realistic and sure. uh, textured and difficult right. to rewrite, and more democratic from, from some right. other point of view. Sure, because it's all being done. The Shelley. Oh, caller. We have a caller. Uh, it's more democratic in a way because it's all 
being done by the people who live there, and it's just really just collecting stuff, right? It's like the yeah. library in Alexandria that they were just collecting everything they could get their hands on about the one, the one the that writings. burned down. Yes. Well, actually. I also, I also, during the research for the show, I found out it wasn't, it was part of a fire, part of it burned down, but actually it was shut down by the Christians and the Muslims because, you know, oh, if it, if it was knowledge that was not in the Bible or the Quran, then it was not real. And if it was contained in the Bible or Quran, then it was superfluous because we already had the Bible and the Quran. Mm. Yes. Hey, caller, welcome. You're on the air. Please state your name. Yeah, hello. My name is Dan Baker. Can you hear me? Yes. Dan Baker. Uh, I'm an old friend of Paul Raffel's. <laughs> I'm a writer, and uh, he's a historic friend of mine. <laughs> we will not hold that against part you. of Paul's history. Oh, okay. Am I on the air? You yes. are. Oh, gee, listen, I don't want to waste your time here. I uh, I got interested in an aspect of history that I thought was overlooked and extremely important, especially currently, and that is the role of women as power holders in history. Mm. And that fascinated me when I learned that there were only about six times in history when women held absolute power were shot callers to the max, mm. <laughs> history changed. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, their, their, their reigns or rule were marked by diplomacy over warfare, social progress, political stability, financial uh, 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 progress, etc. Mm. And uh, that always interests me, I always, especially when I flew one time from London to Paris and I flew over the craters in the Somme Valley in France caused by World War One, yeah. which was caused by a bunch of guys that just got in a bar fight, you know? Right, royal families, old. So anyhow, I wanted to kind of bring that up. I just had lung surgery, so I'm having a little problem. Are you going to help us by telling us who these women were? Well, at least. Yeah, they were, especially Queen Couple. Elizabeth of England. Uh -huh. The Elizabethan rule era is a classic example of a, of the role of women as a power holder, hmm. Cleopatra was another. Um, um, uh, let's see, the Israeli Golda Meir. Et but did they did they not all preside over wars and? Not necessarily. No, their 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 rules of reign were generally marked by peace, by diplomacy, over warfare, etc. Hmm. So anyway, I'm going to move along here. I, I stumbled across something else. I was watching TV one day, and they did a documentary. On the uh, a woman who who was in Berkeley here, she wrote a book on the the imperial harem system of the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> wow! Her name is Leslie Pierce. Her book is the imperial harem. Yeah, that's and a very interesting subject. It's fantastic. They the the, the Ottoman Empire was the longest lasting empire in human history, and, and by probably the most successful. And this harem system was built to provide heirs. And also, they also it was also a listening post for the for the power holders to listen to women. And one of them hmm. actually fell in love with the sultanate and, became, and and ended up running the place for fifty years. Well, you know, you bring that up. They had a strong uh, uh, influence on who the next uh, sultan would be. Exactly. What they did is they they raised these kids and had them fight each other. It, hmm. it was a king rat situation. Whoever survived, and, and they and they did kill each other too. But, to the last, to the last man. Well, pretty much, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a fascinating book that was overlooked, and uh, I see it on Amazon now. So I think it's out of print. But anyhow, one other thing, uh, I can barely breathe here, so I'm going to kind of spit this out for your hmm. your listeners. There were two uh, times in history when history turned on a on a couple of little coincidences. One of them was uh, when uh, Hitler invaded Russia. Yeah. There was a point where Stalin was ready to concede all of the Ukraine to Hitler if he would call it off. And the betting is that Hitler was going to take the deal. And if he did, he could have swung the entire army group south down to reinforce Rommel, take uh, Egypt, the Suez Canal, mm. etc. But mm. he didn't. <clears throat> and secondly, when we lived in Hawaii, one of the things I stumbled across in John Tolan's book was that... Uh, Yamoto did not want the Pearl Harbor attack to go forward hmm. because he wanted to capture Hawaii. And if they had done that, Pacific War would have been over. Hmm. So anyhow, that's all I have. But the, that, that topic, the role of women power holders in history, is, is something that we <laughs> explore, especially today. 
Right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And okay. it's only it's only today that it's starting to be explored. Really. I mean. Oh, geez. It's just if you look at the Republican Party, they have two yeah. <laughs> women senators. They look terrible today. If I was them, I I I would go blow up the power supply to the uh, capital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of your hair. If okay. anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Well, th- I, I I don't know. Are you okay? You <laughs> call he's got, well, he's just, got, uh, I'm just barely just lung recovering surgery. from a lung resection. But, well, it yeah. sounds like you're doing pretty good. Thank you kindly. Well, if anybody, I'll, I'll get I'll get out of your hair unless anybody has a question. Question? Question? Where Where is my hair? Well, so now, <laughs> where is Stephen's hair? Uh, but um, so you talk about uh, Hitler going into Russia. I mean, that was it. Was that not the prime example of not listening to history, not not understanding what happened the last time? Oh, totally. totally. Like Napoleon was completely destroyed by the Russian winter, and all the Russians had to do was keep retreating until winter came. And then they came back out again, and the the guys had no supplies, and they had no no clothing to deal with the cold. I mean, it was a per- that is the perfect example. It of is listening they all to lost everything in, in Russia, but but had had Stalin had offered him that deal, and if he had yeah. taken it, right. it would have changed. They they would have won. The, the, the Nazis would have sure. won. They would have kicked the British out of the Mediterranean. They would have captured England. It would have sure. been over. Yeah. <laughs> well, Maybe. You know, Maybe. You never know. Yeah. I mean, who knows what could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Dan. We really appreciate you calling in the state you're in. And uh, <laughs> breathe okay. easy and get well soon. My goodness. Okay. I'll give you that title one more time. It's yeah. Imperial Harem, Leslie P. Pierce. And I think she teaches at Berkeley. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so Thanks for much, calling, Dan. Dan. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. There. Dan Baker, History in the Making. Um, you know, you another, brought something up, though. In- another example of not paying attention to history is our adventures in uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Absolutely. <laughs> um, following first the the, the British, yeah. who got defeated, and then the Russians, who got defeated, granted with our help, right. and then us. Yeah. And uh, I, I read a little piece by someone who said that part of the problem with that kind of thing is when uh, the U.S. did not put money into education or into social services. They treated it as a, as a nation that they had that was conquered, basically. Right. Uh, so when they could have injected some money into it, uh, they didn't. And so we the were too busy Taliban invading and Iraq. Al-Qaeda came up and yeah. Mm. Hey, guys, we have a caller. A caller. Caller, you're on your air. On the air, what's your name? Hello, my name is Ginny. I'm from the Tamales Regional History Center. <laughs> oh, oh, very good, Ginny. Ginny. How Thanks are for you? calling. Hi, Paul. <laughs> um, I'd just like to take this conversation a little closer, bring it a little closer to home, mm-hmm. and a little, make it a little more personal also, and say why I think history is important. Good. Um, I used to consider myself a historian, but I think now I'm I'm looking at myself more as an interpreter of history and especially local history. And I think um, it's what I love about local history is its connection that it gives me and and everyone who pays attention to it really with where we are and and who we are it's it's the connection with the past that mm. n- inspires and and really influences me um to learn more about it mm-hmm. and uh jenny are you a member of one of the ranching families that has a <laughs> i've great history? been here uh, about 45 years oh interesting okay. but, um i came to history through architecture and i and, and uh. i we were looking for a, a little old house and found one in Tamales, of course, because there are <laughs> yes. a lot of them here. We have some. And um, I've always been interested in historic buildings ever since my mother dragged me around to the missions. And and so I, I, and I think people come to history for m- many, many different reasons. Mm. Um, you know, probably writers come to it through through styles of writing, and, and artists come through it through, you know, aesthetic um, styles and, and I just think it's it's such a personal thing, an mm. interest in history that 
it's it's kind of hard to and I don't I am the least political person I've, I've ever known. I don't even I don't even want to know about the history of of um, you know Mesopotamia or <laughs> stuff like that. Not that it doesn't make a difference in our lives, or especially can if that's what you're interested in. But I think there's so many aspects. And I mean, history is just life. In the past, it's not mm. that different from life now. And I've always thought, I, you were talking about how kids in school are taught history. I've always thought that always it should be taught from the local and the near in time farther back rather than the other way around. I didn't care about how the country was formed. Now I do, but I didn't <laughs> when I was, you know, in fourth grade and started learning about it. And I think if kids, learn it locally first, they develop that connection, especially mm. around here, where there are so many, as, as Paul said, fifth and sixth generation families. It's yeah, I think that's a great point. I remember being a kid in elementary school and starting to learn about history and not being able to really make direct connections for my own life. Yeah. Yeah, and so I really love this idea of um, how kids can look at their local communities, Mm -hmm. you know, their own community's history. Mm -hmm. How did things end up the way they are? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And who decided. Probably, too. It's easier to teach, probably. What links with the past are important. Then, you know, then they develop that curiosity to dig into other communities. Exactly. Then you realize, oh, we're just all a part of it. It's not that them, Mm -hmm. Right. they then and us now. It's Mm -hmm. just a continuum. But you know, I we're you used a good word and that was interpreter of history Uh and and that you know that was one of the things that brought up this topic today and that is even locally, even uh, you know, even contemporaneously uh, we are all interpreters. So again, it's one person's story over the next, and even on a local level, and even only going back maybe twenty years, yeah. thirty years, yeah. the the uh, the take on that story can be very, very different mm-hmm. depending on who is telling the story. Mm-hmm. So you know, I I really like the your the fact of keeping it local, especially when children are little. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, uh, you know. The reason, one of the reasons Paul wrote what he did was that uh, uh, whose story and who and how how fashioned is that story depending on who's telling the story. Mm. Right, right. Mm. I heard about a, a Mormon community that um, I, I don't have the names and the exact locations, but um, it, it was a completely walled in little town. And the leader of that community had written history for the children of the town to learn. And part of that history was that whatever's on the outside of the wall is completely unsafe. (laughs) Um, So it was a very manipulative, you know, clearly manipulative use of history. We can see that, you know, from the outside uh, as if, you know, our... American history taught in school is any different in a, in a way. It's still manipulative but and even, directive. Even with local history, uh, to answer Stephen here, you have a multiplicity of, of mm-hmm. voices, not just a single right. voice. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't be nearly, right. you, you can't be as manipulative. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and as as you get farther away from it, too, you are looking at the big picture, sort of, not so much the details. And in some ways, then, it becomes clearer. Mm. And the, maybe the details fall away unless you have um, real good primary source, things like letters and stuff. But you can still infer things. You know, that's interesting uh, because... Um it seems that, uh, you know, if you're talking about local history, for example, you know, there's the environmental history uh, uh, of that, and that tells its own story. Sure. Uh, and there's the, Hindus, uh, the history of the indigenous people, and that tells another story. So, uh, you know, the question is, are, you cho- are we choosing to tell those stories as mm-hmm. well? But really, it's all one story, and I think if we see it as all one story. Right, the continuum. Yeah, a continuum. Um, it's it's more more real and more honest 
and, and more relatable. Yeah. And, yeah, and it makes more sense. And does the uh, does the history center have a uh, history of uh, indigenous peoples here? We have some things. We don't have a lot. We have a couple of collections that are hmm. pretty good artifacts and stuff. But um, it's it's hard because. We deal with a lot of photography, to me, and that's because, I suppose, because I'm the curator, and, I, and that's what I choose to, to use a lot. But photography is a, a, a wonderful primary source, and because, of course, the, you know, the Miwoks weren't running around with browning cameras until right. the, when, I don't know, the turn of the 19th, 20th century, nobody had those. There, there wasn't much, and so it's it's harder to interpret. Hmm. Yeah, and it's a, it's even going to be harder as we move into the future with the digital era. Think, you know, you can't always count on what you're looking at. True, that uh, that's you're right. Yeah. Hey, I uh, we have a caller on line too. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the station ID now. If you Good can idea. hold on, if everyone will hold on, that was great. And uh, I'll try. <laughs> Good, and thank you for doing this. This is, this is oh, thank you. Jim. Oh, and may I say one more thing, really fast? The, yeah. the yeah. Um, fundraiser that's on October sixth is not for the town hall; it is at, at the, the town hall, hall. but ah. it is benefiting the history center. Gotcha. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, this is KWMR Point Reyes Station, ninety point five in Point Reyes, eighty nine point nine Bolinas, and ninety two point three San Geronimo Valley. Our pro- programming is brought to you by our listener members and by the Pacific Sun Arts and News Weekly online at pacificsun.com. Also supported by the Sustainable Sports Foundation, which puts on the Marin County Half Marathon the Marin County Triathlon Weekend, and the Celebrity Doodle Auction. All net proceeds from these events provide swim lessons for children from low-income families with an emphasis on water safety. More information online at sustainablesports.org. We are also supported by the Willow Creek Wealth Management, serving the North Bay since 1984 offering independent, fee-only wealth consultation. Information available at willowcreekwealth.com. All right, well, let's find out who's on the line. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name? Sally. Hi, Sally. Uh, Thanks for waiting. Not you again. (laughs) Well, I I have your hair. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad someone does. It's fixed. That's really the only reason I called. Um, (laughs) I I was going to talk about certain current events and history repeating itself, mm. <sighs> um, but I thought I might veer off from that incredibly depressing topic and talk about um, Giorgio Vasari, who was a biographer of Renaissance artists and a kind of interesting man. He wrote, he was an artist himself, um, and um, you can see his paintings um, at the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence, or architecture in the Uffizi, but um, he wrote a book in 1550, and then and then it was expanded, it's, um, like, I don't know, 20 years later or something, <clears throat> Lives of the Most Excellent Painters, Sculptors, and Architects. And it's really, I don't know now if it's considered sort of the quintessential um, tome about about um, Renaissance art, but uh, Italian Renaissance art. M- my sister should really be on this call, as she is an <laughs> Italian Renaissance scholar. However, I just remember reading, I, you know, had, had his books, um, and then reading later that he, you know, was kind of not, like, what were his sources, you know? Uh. And um, so um, it's interesting um, because I guess an Austrian scholar uh, took on, named Wolfgang Kalab, took on the task of finding, you know, if if he was really getting it right or not. 
and uh, a study of the book. So you have a study of a book that's talking about, you know, Renaissance artists. It's kind mm. of interesting. Um, he tended to, Vasari tended to, you know, not give hard facts. <laughs> or he, or that he was wrong on dates of birth and, and on attribution. And So it was, it, was it just inaccurate or was it? Actually, like lives of the of the great painters, the Reader's Digest edition. He was the first Reader's Digest writer. Uh, kind of. Mm. I mean, he did coin the phrase, um, or he did he did say that the Renaissance was born in Florence. That that's the birthplace. So it's a Florentine or Florentine invention mm. that, of Renaissance art. And his, his, he was criticized even in his own time, but not really questioned. His, mm. his factual stuff wasn't really questioned until around the 19th century when you had scholars going into archives and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know what, how he's viewed now, but his books were really considered the bomb diggity doodah. If I may use an academic phrase, too technical. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> but uh, but so that's an example of uh, of history in quotation marks, right? I mean, that's that's just yeah, somebody, like and the only animal. who would be the only ones who would have time or the energy to write things with a with a goose quill uh, by candlelight would be the church and the church would be the only ones who would criticize i wonder if they had any influence over what he wrote about these artists who were mainly employed by the church mm. ah. well um my sister is facts? one of these renaissance scholars who can read ancient sort of this sort of Italian from the 1400s. She oh. can read it, she can decipher it, and she's she does go into archives and she gets facts. You know, that mm. brings up mm. something uh, interesting just in by uh, implication is that history is written by the educated people, obviously, and uh, and people with higher education may have uh, a different point of view than people who, uh, who don't. So... Uh, more uh, status quo, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were with when Paul was talking in his in his write up though about uh, 1984 or George Orwell and and uh, mm. history. I you know, I, I it set me thinking about uh, pretty much everything, and and I'm asking myself how much of it can I actually trust, and uh, because there really there it is a. a, a a degree of alternate set of facts, as uh, we've heard so re much recently. Who controls the past controls the future. Hmm. And who controls the present controls the past. That's but one, one thing that can happen, at least with, uh, um, you know, history, e European history, uh, as well as the uh, United States, is there are sources that you can go to fact check. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of verification. And in terms of the poor, the, there are birth and death records. Uh, there, there, uh, there are records at least of collectivities of economic um, activity. Mm. So there, there, there are ways to get at and verify or disallow uh, certain kinds of histories. And more documents are being found all the time. Or things like uh, documents written in ancient Welsh are finally being <laughs> looked at. And, and so Thank they're God. changing. They're cha well, they're changing. Too many instead concepts. of looking at history from the Roman point of the empire, the Roman Empire point of view, they start looking at it from what was happening with the Welsh and the Scots and the, the mm. ones who were being pushed out. Too many consonants. <laughs> the Welsh language. <laughs> History is so interpretive. It's rather interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, it's very... Yeah. Well, and especially in this day and age of alternative facts, uh, we really have to do our own sleuthing. 
Mm. You know, and like you said, to check, uh, you know, you can get information, but, you know, go into it and find out more, dig a little deeper and find out if those facts are, in fact, facts. Mm. Well, and I, who do you trust? <laughs> Wikipedia? Well, right. You know, when we, uh, the president is, uh, he's such a joker, a uh, uh, clown in some sense, but w- especially his, uh, the blatancy <clears throat> of his lies, but perhaps uh, in politics, uh, really, he's just on the surface, perhaps below the surface, just as many lies are being perpetrated. We're just, we just don't, uh, you know, we're just, they're not being reported as, as uh, clearly as, uh, as, this often, ma- yes. yeah, as this man of high <laughs> Well, position. he is the president, after all. Well, I think in current events such as these, when you have so many platforms of media coming at you, it almost affords, it's a double-edged sword, I guess, but it, it does seem as famously discussed and, and you know, Facebook being quite um, famously now or just just a perpetrator of disinformation hmm. or, a, a, mm-hmm. you know, a very dangerous platform for information that's just flat out wrong or swaying hmm. people. Right. There's obfuscation. Hateful. There's really, I mean, I think within our own, I think in the quest for power, so much history is about powerful men. In, in, in the quest for power, men will just do anything. Yes. Say anything. <laughs> They'll obfuscate. Yeah. Um, unless you're Jimmy Certain Carter. Men, or and they will be. His ilk. And, and, um, and everyone just said he was weak. Okay, so mm, mm. look at what's happening now. You have this this fossil from hell, Chuck Grassley, <laughs> who's been exhumed from you know like the, the Paleolithic the era, hole of of you know I don't know what kind of despicable germs, and <laughs> he's just being a complete you know jerk. I, I can't say the word I'd really like to say, yes. and. Uh, just the whole thing of, and what disturbs me so much is uh, the bizarre way that people buy into information that's being disseminated as right. being. They almost take a weird. Uh, what's it's almost like, especially with regards to women in this mm-hmm. particular situation. I'm talking about with um, um, the lovely woman who, Blasey mm. Ford. Ford, these women who it's like they drank the Kool-Aid at Jonestown or they, you know, they, they got hypnotized. Women who think that it isn't a bad thing, uh, that every boy uh, sort of like physically attacked a girl growing mm. up. It's mm. almost like, well, that just happens. They're just boys. But this was, pre- you I'm know, in what, so in, in you have to, like, employ maybe your, ima- I mean, I guess the imagination comes into play, but you have to employ your critical right. thinking. Like, mm. I'm thinking, she's saying she went up a staircase and was pushed from behind into a room. That says to me, pre-meditation. At least mm. it says aggressive behavior. Like, sure. I never knew a boy who pushed me from behind into a room, okay? Mm. Mm-hmm. I knew a boy that wanted to, like, you know, jump on me and, and had fully intended to do so, but wasn't able to do it. And, um, and, but I don't, I never knew a boy that behaved with such aggression. Mm-hmm. And this sort of mishmashing of things. I mean, you do want to parse everything out and make everything heard and get everything straight. It's really hard to do because people, people's brains, it's like if you play a song and the song, I don't know, you know the song really well, but you're hearing a, a different mix, you, I swear, your brain will insert the missing music <laughs> you've heard over. Right. This is sort of what I'm talking about, the right. brain... Well, you you, you want to you know go from your personal experience base, and if you never had such a horrific experience in your personal life, it might be harder to be empathetic and and try to imagine what that might have been like for someone else. But I I personally don't fully understand that. 
No, but, uh, well, so in, key, in more in line with the topic of the program, um, maybe I, the only way will that you'll get a clear picture of what's happening is when it becomes history. In the future, mm. people will look back on this and do lots more research, mm-hmm. whether he gets nominate whether he gets put in place or not there there's going to be a lot of people working on finding out the, information the, and the, it will you know i mean it will become history they say it takes 50 years yeah right yeah and that's interesting well thank you and i i'm sorry that i went into a oh uh, well how can we not <laughs> i went into a little bit of a rant there that's but okay. it's a very i mean well it's a rant worthy time we're in <laughs> yes it is <laughs> And it's a big topic, what you're tackling today, and thank you for doing so. Yeah, thank thanks for, for calling, calling in. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Now, Paul, yes. uh, in keeping with your membership of the writers group up in Tamales, I understand you've written a little piece about the History Center. Would you like to read that? or uh, what do you feel No, about? I'd rather paraphrase it. Okay. Uh, the About 40 years ago... Um, Some of the local people said, you know, we ought to develop a history related to the schools uh, or for the use of the schools. So in the the, um, middle school, they assigned a file drawer. Mm -hmm. The file drawer rapidly grew to a whole – the whole file, then the whole room (laughs) – and then about 20 years ago, they acquired the old, uh, still-standing uh, gym and auditorium mm-hmm. from the high school. The high school itself had, had uh, uh, been taken down, or, or I Moved, think it was a yeah. fire. Right. Um, and through some legacies that were left by local ranchers, uh, they were able to convert it into... Uh, uh, a museum with a meeting spaces downstairs, um, and so it it really at each step, um, it's been and through the uh, initially the agency of the school, but uh, at each step it's been local people mm. nice. who have 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 developed it and it, and continue it today. And like I say, it's all volunteer. Yeah, a real community history center. Right. Yeah, yeah that's really beautiful. It's lovely. And, uh, yes, they're having a uh, fundraiser at the Tamales Town the, Hall. The 40th anniversary, yeah. 40th anniversary of the, uh, of the Tamales Regional History Center on Saturday, October 6th from 2 to 5. To order tickets, call 415-609-6852. Or 707-763-8104. And thank thank you for that. Oh, hey. (laughs) Uh, Local history. It's very important. Look at what Art Rogers has done over the years in the back page of the paper. Wonderful, wonderful things. It's lovely to see the the growth of the the dynasties here. Sometimes (laughs) it's, it's the decay. (laughs) You're listening to Let's Talk Call-In Radio. If you'd like to join the conversation, we're talking about history today. And the number is 415-663-8492 or 8317. Who needs history? Well, speaking of of local history, though, uh, you know, there was this whole movement of, quote-unquote, hippies that came through. Uh, it had been a rancher community, and then there was mm. this whole group of people that came uh, who wanted to be back to the land and, uh, uh, you know, culminated in the building of the dance palace. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a, a history that's taking place in my lifetime here within the last 40 years that's, you know, a very interesting story. Big change in Huge. the community. Huge. Uh, yeah. And, and now uh, they're all gone. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Except for a, re, uh, you, a residue. That's a residue. <laughs> Never been called around, a residue before? The, the ring around the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. I'm gonna, don't tell my wife this. <laughs> um, yeah, local history. Uh, important because uh, if, if people are going to stick around, it makes people want to stick around perhaps. 
makes people feel part of a place. The more you feel part of a place, the more it feels like home, the more you want to stay and maybe not travel so much. Or is that not true? I don't know. Um, they do <laughs> say uh, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it, you know, in various forms. Is, is that really true? I'm not sure. I know that for the same example, Afghanistan, Moscow, of course. Afghanistan, everyone knew about that. I mean, that's certainly the Brits knew. I was taught as a child, you know, the great, the great victory and defeat in Afghanistan <laughs> by the great leaders of the British Empire. Uh, everyone knew about it, but it didn't I guess stop they, us going in. Did they it? thought it was worth repeating. The French pulled out of Vietnam. It didn't stop the U.S. going in. So do, does history really teach lessons, or does it just show us that we keep doing we've the same thing all over along? and over and over again? I that don't know. power struggles will engender war and will and will do all kinds of terrible well, things. Well, maybe it's an evolutionary process that's just going to take a long time, and that we have to just keep chipping away at it, hmm. and that we can learn something uh, if we look at it. We have to actually look at it to learn from it. Maybe mm. we only learn about our mistakes, though. Maybe, maybe all the times we didn't do something because of history, uh, we didn't make that mistake. And those things might not, again, it's selective history. But That's I, a good point. I, I, I was thinking, though, about uh, this thing with Roy Moore because he's come up recently in terms of uh, what's going on now. And it's interesting because uh, all, the, all the stories were about his uh, – uh, uh, wooing 15-year-olds, etc. And I think the story is that he lost his election by just a smidgen, just a, by a hair, that still, with all the, all the stuff that came out about him, with all this dirty laundry, half the people in his state still voted for him. I think that's the that's story. That's a whole other topic. We could talk about that for well, a while. So polarization, we all like to say we've never been so polarized, politically speaking, right? I mean, the, they voted for him because he was a Republican. Well, so evangelical. And a good boy. Willing to, though, old cast boy. aside. Right, yeah, 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 of course. But it's all, it's about power. It's men getting power and women tagging along behind them. But, uh, but yeah, we got to um, change that. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, make your own mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's our turn. Let us do the mistaken. <laughs> See what happens. It can't yeah. hurt, right? You've got all of history to look back on and not make the same mistakes <laughs> that men made. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Roy Moore. Oh, that's right. Polarization. Uh, have we ever been as polar? I think you know they used to have duels, right? Right. Mm. People, men, men in power. In the got Hatfields killed. and the McCoys. Well, no, I mean like no, Aaron Burr or, or whatever his name was. Didn't he? Was it Burr? Ray, Raymond Alexander Burr. Hamilton. Run, run the time. Of, run the time of the Civil War with the abolitionists. Well, yeah. And, and Talk about, slavers. talk about polarization. You, you had people in the Senate who were took their cane mm. to another senator. Yeah. Mm. It was a violent time. But, yeah, what, was, what is more polarized than a civil war? I mean, we're, at least we're, right we're, now we're not having a civil war. Who knows? Will we learn from history? I don't know. Um, and the writer uh, Jill Lepore, who was uh, who was being interviewed by on another radio station somewhere, um, she uh, she said, "Well, it's never been perhaps so polarized for white people, but if you think about 150 years of slavery, I guess." That population was pretty polarized against the people who were <laughs> who owned them and were mistreating them and breeding them like cattle. It's all, so, you know, it's from where all you perspective. sit. perspective, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. those backstories. Uh, the same person, I think, is being interviewed uh, by Michael Krasny. Really, is it? She, she, was, she, was, uh, she was mentioning that um, what we consider the roots of the uh, the republic in terms of the revolution, she seemed to be intimating that it was really about slavery, that England had abolished slavery, and slave owners here were afraid that uh, this was going to carry over mm. from England, and therefore uh, uh, this wasn't about throwing tea into the water. This was more about, again, preserving slavery by mm. our founding fathers who were slaveholders. Right. 
Mm. And all the concessions that were made to the slave states, uh, for example, the Electoral College and all that. The, the uh, th- three-fifths of a person. Three-fifths of a person for a slave, yeah. <sighs> That's history, see? It's wonderful, isn't it? And it's <laughs> – I just I, – do we learn? I don't know that we do. I don't, I'm not sure we do learn. Well, I think it's a little hard to learn. I mean, back to being a kid again, you know, when uh, there's certain stories being espoused to us mm. and then we just believe them because mm. we're told these stories over and over. Um, so, yeah, I think we have to, you know, parents out there really need to read their kids' history books and, and have conversations with their kids well, about history. So. What about encouragement, though? You, you, you say, do we learn? But I think so much that we're encouraged by history about what people have done in the past. Yeah, I used to feel really proud about the whole, you know, civil rights movement and, mm. and all of the improvements over the years uh, towards more civil rights. And <laughs> I think that's part of what's so hard about what's happening in our history right now. It's It feels like we're going to lose some of those civil rights. Mm. And that feels like a backward movement. It's just a blip in history. Give us a call. We have a few minutes, a couple of minutes left. Give us a call, 663-415-663-8492. We're talking about history and who needs it? What use oh, is it? Paul. Well, you know, as, <laughs> as, an, as an English person originally, when I was in school, it was just this litany of dates and names. Mm-hmm. That's all you had to memorize, mm-hmm. you know. That, that- Edward yeah, that's the Confessor, fifteen thirty two. It wasn't the involvement with local history, whereas the no, in fact, the people in the Tamal school system come over to the uh, history See, that's, center. That's wonderful. The most, the the greatest, the most interest I had in <coughs> history was because my father was kind of an am, amateur archaeologist. So, locally around the outskirts of London, within a half a day's drive anyway, uh, there are these incredible archaeological digs, archaeological sites. and uh, Mainly of Romans, right? Yeah, mainly yeah. Roman or, uh, or Stone Age, some of the Iron Age stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so that was the interesting part, was going to one of these digs and going down and finding the, the floor of a, of a villa, a Roman villa with the central heating and all, you know, all that. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> uh, that really, wow, that yeah. really brought it home because it was right there, and you actually are seeing it. But that whole thing, I got a—I don't know what grade I got in history. I don't think I ever passed it, just because it <laughs> was have... just this constant thing about, oh, this is the royal family Rote down memory. through the ages, and these are the dates that they lived. And you go, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, yeah, yeah, no integration. Henry VIII had six wives. Okay, great. You abolish the Catholic Church? Okay. <laughs> What's it doing for me? I don't know. But it's, uh, I, I don't know, I guess it's good to, if you're going to do uh, trivia quizzes and stuff, it's handy. Absolutely. Play on Jeopardy. <laughs> I was very good at trivia. <laughs> My dad was amazing at it, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, I, I'm, I'm all for teaching history in a, in a positive, in a way that interests people. Any yeah, subject, and I think it's great, you know, the be, kids go to the Tamales Yes, history absolutely. Right. I that's majored that's, in history in college. You uh, did? I, really? I, yeah. So I, I'm for history, actually. And when he was talking about the Ottoman Empire, it's a fascinating story. Hmm. And uh, just, to, just to bring uh, up what he was talking about in the harems, their method of uh, succession, the sons were all uh, named governors all around the country. And then when the sultan died, uh, they battled it out. And the survivor uh, became the new sultan. And, and the women, uh, who knew about the death first, gave them a huge advantage. So the, so the mothers of various, and they were vying among themselves. Mm. So the mothers might give their son uh, the knowledge before it reached the other ones. It gave him a chance to raise his army, etc. So, uh, so there was sexual slavery, but they also had political power. Interesting. No. <laughs> um, that's that's. Let's talk for this week. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Paul. 
for coming in and uh, and telling us about the Tamales Town Hall. It's always good. Um, I mean, about the Regional History Center, excuse me. Uh, and Stephen, thank I was you. waiting for my thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to all our callers and, of course, the people who called in. Thank you so much. Dan, get well soon. Uh, KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week.